you know, first of all, we're excited to be here. We think we're in a great field. Uh, I think this is, uh, if you look around the regionals, this one uh, from top to bottom has a bunch of good clubs in it. So some we're really looking forward to. We know it's going to be a great venue and a great place to play. So excited to be here. Just raise your hand if you have questions. Players. For either you guys, uh, is there any advantage or dis advantages or disadvantages in playing in the first game of the day? What, what's kind of the, the feeling to get the thing started? Um, I don't think there's any necessary like disadvantage or advantage really. I mean, depending on whether the game's at one or the game's at six, we're just going to try to play our game really. Um, I guess you could say like the early game, in case there's weather, like it doesn't get backed up. I, that's why I figured they picked to play at one, but. It doesn't really matter to us. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, kind of, what, what are you, uh, a little bit of preliminary scouting, what have y'all seen from A&M, and, and uh, what do you think the, some of the key matchups are going to be? Um, obviously, you know, they come from a good conference, good team. They can really hit. Uh, but it's just any other game, really. I mean, Obviously, we'll go through a scouting report on Friday for their guy that they're throwing. But um, in terms of pitching, Caleb can probably go more over there with that, but nothing crazy. Yeah, obviously, we know they won one of the best divisions in the country, so uh, they're going to be good top to bottom. So, um, But I would say the scouting is more about ourselves, not really the opponents. Uh, we want to look, look at ourselves, see where we can improve, and. Uh, where we can play to our strengths to match up. So uh, what, about, what about the environment? You guys played in a lot of big time environments this year, the last couple of years. I mean, you guys are, the program's been a lot in some way tournaments. Mm -hmm. What about preparing for the environment? I mean, like there's some guys on this team, like we went to, we went to LSU last year. We played pretty well in that stadium. And I thought we played pretty well in uh, at Swayze Field this year, so I mean, the big environment, I don't think it's really a big a big thing for us. Like we've been we've played in front of a lot of people, we've played in front of not a lot of people. So it's just a game. Kind of in the same regard, A and M actually doesn't have a lot of guys who have played in a regional, but y'all have um, some decent experience. How much of that can you kind of lean back on heading into a, a, an opening game like this? Um, I mean we've had some guys that, on our roster that have played in a regional, but this is the first one for us in four years. So, you know, I think we're just excited to get going, really. You know, we put ourselves back where this program belongs in the NCAA tournament. Um, we're just excited to get going. How much does the upholding of the tradition of the program do you guys talk about as players? I they dominated the Summit League for quite some time. And regionals are part of the program. Is that something you guys talk about a lot, that you have to uphold a tradition? Um, yeah, it's it's pretty tough, like coming to practice every day and like looking up at the right field wall, and you see twenty something uh, NCAA tournaments, and I think we had almost twenty in a row at one point. So, um, you know, we had COVID year; um, it was my first year here, so we didn't get to go to a regional. And then, obviously, last year we uh, we we didn't get the opportunity to go to a regional. So, I would say it's more of a like a an end of the year goal. Like we want to get to a regional, and we don't want that to be the end. We want to keep going. So motivated us. So I guess, what do you guys consider, what's been your big success this year? Why have you guys had success? What, what do you guys do better than maybe maybe some other teams do? Um, I would say our lineup, top to bottom, uh, we have good players and we have good pitching. And, you know, we play together. We play as a team. Uh, Fulham always says we play well, we win. And most of the time that's true. So, I mean, we just got to play our game, and if we come out and, you know, do the little things right, execute, then we'll be all right. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll turn it over to questions for coach. You guys can go ahead. And everybody good with these guys going ahead and get going? Yeah. We're getting ready to stretch here. Thank you. Travis? Yeah, Coach, uh, 
I know Coach Lossangle said he put a lot of thought into which game you wanted to pick the first game. Is there, what are the pros and cons from your angle about playing in the first game of the regional? Well, for us, I think when you're the visiting team, I don't think it matters a whole lot. You know, we're going to be in the hotel, and uh, whether it's early or late, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. So, uh, you know, a lot of times when you get to this point, some of, the, some of the pressure becomes on the team that is hosting or that is the home team. So, uh, for us, I, I don't think it matters one way or the other. From a pitching standpoint, how do you combat a, a lineup that's been so hot as AMS has been? Well, you know, you look at the entire tournament, I think, you know, all four teams in here offensively have a chance to be really good offensively. Uh, A&M's been offensively all year long, so again, for us to have a chance and stay in the game, we're we're uh, we're going to have to pitch really well. There's no question about it. We're going to have to pitch really well in a, in, with our starter and our bullpen guys have got to be sharp too. So it's going to take a collective effort from our pitchers to kind of keep a lot of these offenses in check. Also, do you think uh, it seems like all four of the teams here can run and are willing to run? Uh, does that mean conversely? Holding the run game down will matter in this region of the defense. Yeah, I think the best way to hold the run game down is not let anybody get on base. You know, that's going to be as much key as anything. You know, we, we thought we ran a little bit, and we did run a little bit more this year than we have in the past. And you look at all four teams in, in this regional, and I think we've run the least amount. So uh, without question, I think uh, there's speed in all four of these lineups. Um, and it's going to be part of the regional too. You're, you're going to have to get to this time of the year and make sure you do all the all the little things right. And one of those things is being able to hold runners and, and not giving up free bases. Uh, but it goes back to, man, if you want to stop a really good run game, try not to let them on base. And I think we're going to have to do a good job of doing that. The players talked about, you said if you play well, you'll do well. Do you, as a four seed, do you, do you embrace underdog? You don't talk about underdog or you just stick to what you guys do. Man, we don't we don't talk about any of those things really. I think you know, y'all asked the question to both these guys, you know, what what do you know about AM? What are you doing about AM? And and they're good. We all know they're good. Um, but our focus isn't on who we're playing. It's on how well we play. We feel like if we play well, we're gonna have an opportunity to stay in the game and win. Um, and if we don't, we're probably gonna struggle. So our focus really goes to what we're doing and how we approach the game and what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are and and really not worry about who you're playing or where you're playing. I know uh, your team had some success against a Schlossnickel-led TCU team a few years ago. Uh, how much can you draw on some uh, success like that for uh, a regional like this going against the same coach team? None. It was a long time ago. <laughs> None of these guys were here. Uh, you know, they, they don't remember those kind of things. Uh, I, I, I think, you know, we've been blessed and we've been fortunate to have a lot of good players over a long period of time. And at that time, we had a good team that year. We had good players that year. So we feel like we have a good team this year with some good players. So, uh, But in terms of, of what they're doing, man, that was a long time ago. Uh, Coach Schlossnagel said even though it was at different times, your hometown in Pennsylvania is very close to his. Very close. Maryland. I mean, yeah. How much did you know of him coming up? How do you know him at all? these days well I'm gonna I'm gonna age him a little bit too but when he was an assistant coach and I was in high school I got recruited by him a little bit uh, his hometown and, and the town where I grew up are 30 minutes apart he grew up in Hagerstown I grew up in a small town in South Central Pennsylvania Chambersburg Pennsylvania so coming out of high school he was an assistant at the time oh where I, I think it was at maybe maybe Georgia Tech maybe Clem I can't remember. Uh, but but recruited me out of high school. So it's funny how things uh, come full circle. Several years ago, this has been a long time ago, and he was at Tulane. We had a chance to talk about it a little bit too. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's weird how the baseball circle is very small and it becomes that small. For more information, you can visit TulsaWorld.com.